Hey there. Well, the same principle applies when comparing analog audio to digital audio, as does comparing film to digital video capture. As long as we're not talking about low bitrate garbage, digital has the least amount of noise, it has the least amount of loss, it can be manipulated far more easily, to the point where there are just countless things that you can do in digital that you just couldn't touch in analog. Having said that, digital offers no character. There is nothing to color the sound or the visuals. It's very clinical feeling. So people end up using a lot of uh, audio plugins and they do a lot of color grading and a number of other methods to try to make it look more or sound more uh, colored. When playing a record, all of that noise, including the pops and scratches and clicks, can give it its own environment. I mean, you could, there could be a record that doesn't have any music on it at all. It just, it just moves the needle along, right? <laughs> but just hearing that by itself can sometimes be kind of calming. It, it's, uh, so I understand the, the love of records as far as that goes. It's kind of like sitting in front of a fireplace without the heat, right? <laughs> And the frequencies that are boosted and the frequencies that are reduced in order to amplify a turntable correctly give it a certain sound as well. The only thing I don't like about some records is when the high end is just trashed because they, they just did a shitty job making the record. Or maybe they boosted the volume too much and beyond what the record could actually handle. Or maybe it was played too many times and it has that sound to it, right? Like a jukebox record. A lot of the CDs of the 80s and the 90s that were from bands that were recorded before everything went digital, yeah, a lot of those CDs sounded worse than when you played the records. And this is because at that time, they didn't know how to remaster for the colorless and clinical digital sound. This is one of the things that made some people feel that analog was still better. If you compare a lot of newly remastered, older albums to their previous releases, you can hear a huge difference. Pre-recorded cassette tapes always sounded like ass to me, especially with the ineffective Dolby B that was on pretty much all of them. I mean, if you, if you had something that could do Dolby B, it was never quite in sync and it just made it sound muffled. What Dolby makes it sound like, it, it almost makes it sound like a radio, because there's this certain kind of compression that gets done in order for Dolby to work. But, so, I mean, it, it just always sounded like ass, no matter what. I mean, if, they, if you could actually find one of the recordings that wasn't in Dolby, it probably sounded okay. Now, I, I had tons of, of, of mixtapes of uh, different albums, things that were taken from record, and it still sounded way, way better than the, than the pre-recorded cassettes. And then, do you remember 8-tracks? Man, those just sounded terrible. Always muffled. There was just, there's nothing you could do, you know? They just, well, all right. And then, there's always the songs that would have to go between different tracks. So, you know, your song gets interrupted. You just go... <laughs> you know, it's just so stupid. I, I don't know why that format ever became a thing, you know? It just, it just... And then if, 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 if it, the tape got eaten, people didn't know the little trick that you had to do to pull out the... Uh, uh, if you can make the, 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 the thing inside spin, it'll just soak, suck up the uh, slack. So you have to pull on the tape just the right way, and it, and it goes... And it goes right into the tape. Sorry, rambling. <laughs> Now, reel-to-reel -reel tapes recorded at a decent speed, now there's some good analog sound. There's the hiss, but there was still some color to it as well, some very pleasant color to it. When it comes to movies, Quentin Tarantino is not a fan of what the digital age has done to cinema. He likes the character of film. And with digital projection, he thinks that a lot of cinema is just like watching a giant television. He believes we have lost a lot of the art of cinema. And he may have a point, though I honestly don't mind it seeming like a giant television. I mean, there's also the, the great audio that most of these new theaters have. It's great. It's, it's all. It's plus. But I, I don't mind it seeming like a giant television because it kind of shows how far we've come when it comes to what we expect out of television. Imagine how people from the 1990s would have thought about the digital projection that we have today. There's no way they would associate 
CRT televisions with 480i resolution to what they'd see on these big screens today. There's, there's no way they'd even make the comparison. Heck, I think it would be really cool if screenage became inexpensive and good-looking enough that they could just literally have a giant LED screen in front of us, not projected at all. Focus would certainly never be a problem. It would also give more seating options because they wouldn't have to worry about anyone blocking the projector. Well, anyway, I don't think that color grading looks nearly as good as actual film degradation or just the limitations of film itself. But I'm actually a fan of making things look as realistic as possible. If you embrace the digital format, rather than trying to emulate film, you can do some pretty cool things that there's no way you could do in film. I love high frame rate cinema, which really was never feasible until we went digital. Among many other things, the camera can do really fast pans and you can still see the background. There were people like Douglas Trumbull, who tried to push for 60 frames per second uh, analog uh, projectors for his film Brainstorm in 1983, but they were deemed the, the equipment was too expensive, not enough uh, theaters were willing to, to do it, so they had to release it in the regular 24 frames per second. But I bet high frame rate cinema bugs the shit out of Quentin Tarantino. Anyway, thanks for watching.